Hi, right now we're going to talk about the three types of foundations used under shipping container buildings. Hi, I'm Larry Lane. I'm an architect and I have been looking into all kinds of cool things that you can design and build with shipping containers. And today, as you know, as far as foundations, we have to have a foundation underneath buildings or else they're just going to kind of slip away, right? And what kind of foundation do you use underneath a shipping container that you want to build? Let's say you want to build a house. Well, there are three different types of foundations. I was looking on the internet just to see what kind of foundations the internet would say are available and available for shipping containers. And I was surprised to see that there were so many things on the internet that was incorrect. I would see things like a foundation is actually a basement. A foundation is a crawl space. A foundation is timber. Well, yeah, you can have timber, but they were talking about telephone poles flat on the ground. I'm talking about permanent foundations underneath a building. So let's look at the three in reverse order of the most popular. Number three, mat or slab foundation. To be able to better illustrate how a mat or raft slab works, let's look at this sketch here of a guest house that's built with a shipping container. You can see the floor plan at liveinacontainer.com. Now a mat or slab foundation is just simply a concrete slab. It's reinforced with concrete, maybe rebar going both ways, or it could actually have welded wire fabric. And then it has oftentimes a downturn uh, edge around there. And that downturn edge is also uh, enforced with, reinforced with steel. Now your structural engineer will have to design the type of concrete and also if there's going to be any admixtures need to be put on there depending on the weather and place you're going to be pouring it and also how much steel needs to be in there. But generally speaking, the raft and slab uh, type of foundations are used on soils that tend to shrink and swell. Now notice I'm talking about the soil all at once. So this type of soil is going to be the main factor that will determine whatever kind of foundation you use in your shipping container foundation. So when the shipping container is placed on top of this raft or mat type of foundation, it has a base plate that's already embedded into the concrete, into the slab. And then the corners of the shipping container is that's basically where all the load is placed on a shipping container. That's the way they're designed. When they're stacked on top of ships, the loads go down on the four corners. And those corners have got these casings. The casings also uh, place are placed on top of this, this twist lock on the ships. Some people, some builders are actually using the twist locks and welding those onto a base plate uh, and connecting that into the concrete with rebar or whatever. And then they, when the shipping container is placed onto those twist locks, just like they would be on a ship, it twists. And then you got to check with the municipality. Sometimes they require the foundations to be secure and they don't want your house to move away another, you know, whenever you want to move. They want it to be a fixed house oftentimes. Check with your municipality. And if that's the case, some builders have actually had to weld shut that twist lock so it won't be able to release and, and remove the actually shipping container that's now your home away to go to another location. Number two, the second most popular type of foundation is called a stem wall foundation. Now a stem wall foundation goes all the way around. It's a wall and it goes all the way around the perimeter of the shipping container. And that wall is built with pour in place concrete so they have to form it with rebar going both ways, long ways and up, upwards. Or it could actually be built with CMU, concrete masonry units, and that could have filled cells with rebar in them vertically with ties, these uh, metal ties that go in between every other course. And then the 
uh, the stem wall is set on top of a spread footing. The spread footing is oftentimes poor in place concrete, and it'll be also it'll also have uh, rebar, and that also goes all the way around the building underneath the shipping container. One thing you need to be sure to do is to put the bottom of that footing, that spread footing that that stem wall is setting upon, make sure that is setting on firm ground and also make sure that it's below the frost line. You don't want it above the frost line because it could make your whole foundation heave when it, the ground freezes. Outside of the stem wall is a waterproofing and then oftentimes it will have a rigid insulation um, it could also have a drainage board, which is a drainage mat or whatever plastic uh, Trimco makes it. That's one brand that makes it. And it allows for water to run down and away from the surface of your stem wall. Then at the footing, on the side of footings, you also want to keep the water away from the underside of the footing because you don't want that soil to erode away with all the water. So the way we do that is we put a uh, pipe all the way around the perimeter, make sure that pipe is not below the bearing of the footing, and that pipe also has holes on, on the bottom of it, not the top, because it will get filled up with, sto with stones, because you're going to fill this whole area around the pipe with stones. So the holes are on the bottom, so when the water trickles down, it will come back up to this pipe and it will flow away from your building. And there's also some permeable fabric that wraps around this bunch of gravel and that keeps a lot of the soil from and all the silty stuff from getting into the soil area and then later on being washed away in your pipe. The stem wall type of foundation is kind of cool. I, I like it because it, um, it can be used, like I said, on a firm foundation and because it goes all the way around the building and you have insulation on the outside of the building, you are insulating the floor of your shipping container building. So you can still have insulation underneath your floor or on top of your floor, however you want to do it, but it is not as critical to have maximum insulation underneath the floor because you already are insulating around the perimeter on the stem wall. Another advantage that I like about the stem wall is it keeps all those varmints from coming underneath your house and making your home their home too. We don't like that. With the stem wall, there is no gaps between the ground and the bottom of your shipping container home. Number one, the most popular type of foundation is called a pier foundation. Now there's all kinds of types of piers foundations you know, I'm including peer, I'm including other things kind of like piles and caissons in this category. I like this type of foundation because it is the best type of foundation for your money. It only needs to go where the point loads are, which is probably around the four corners and your structural engineer may want a few more spots in case there are some vertical loads coming down in between the four corners. For example, if you have another uh, container on top stacking, maybe on an opposite direction where you have to have columns down in a mid, mid span between the two columns, and then that load has to transfer down to the ground some way. And so that's where you put your piers. Now the way that the piers are made is that it's made usually with concrete. They'll form the, a pier with a round form, a cardboard form. There is a, um, there is a brand called Sona Tubes that's used and it is usually placed, you dig a hole, put, place this, this form in there, pour the concrete. It already has a uh, rebar set in there before you pour it and then you let it set. Again, you need to make sure that you set that pier below, below the frost line for the same reason we talked about on the stem wall. You don't want it to start heaving up when the soil freezes. There is, there is also a base plate on top of the, this pier. And that base plate sometimes is placed on top of an inch and a half or an inch non-shrink grout. 
and then that base plate's got rebar going into the pier, which then ties it all together. And then once the base plate is set uh, into the concrete, concrete is set, then that means being hard, then they'll put the the shipping container on top of this base plate and weld it, weld it to that. Again, they may use a twist, lock, whatever you, you want to do. If you do piles, you may have several piles, and those piles may be timber, it may be caissons with poured concrete, and then if there's several around your shipping container building, there may also be a pile cap. And that pile cap acts like a pier and beam. The pile cap is the beam part, and the piers are obviously the piers, right? And so then the loads are supported on top. The, the, the loads are placed onto that pile cap and then transferred down to these piers all the way around. Now there are 13 factors that's going to help you decide which of these three are best for your shipping container building. I'll talk about that on another video, but in the meantime, go to liveinacontainer.com and read about it there. Now, if you're one of my friends who have been building shipping container buildings, let me know in the comments below what type of foundation works best for you. Well, if I was helpful with you, understanding a little bit more about what kind of foundations to put underneath shipping containers like this uh, video and also subscribe while we explore all the cool things that you can build with shipping containers.